Hi guys, Colsey, and today I am bringing you a really, really useful tool if you want to improve the quality of your VR games that you're playing on your Quest headset. This tool helps you to be able to improve the rendering that the Quest is doing on, uh, you know, actual internal Quest games. Obviously, this doesn't work on PC games because they are running on your PC. This is for games that run natively on the Quest headset. The tool is called Quest Games Optimizer. I have the website open here. I will put a screenshot on the screen so you guys can see it. Uh, it is available for only like $5, like $4.99. So it's not a lot of money. Uh, you can sideload this into your Quest headset and it gives you a lot more options in terms of customizing the performance of your Quest games. Now I said it, it, it improves them. Uh, obviously that's up to you. You can actually like unimprove them if I guess maybe that would save battery in your headset or something there might be a reason you want to downgrade it but it gives you the control to do that so I have been experimenting with this myself for a little bit I used it mainly uh, in walkabout mini golf a game I really do enjoy and one of my favorite quest games it doesn't work in every game but it does work in a lot of games they have apparently according to the website over 250 games currently optimized uh, they have settings already in the quest game optimizer in the actual software when you load it up on your headset um that they have a hd and like a uhd and like some some pre-made settings for certain games so that, that will up the resolution uh, and and multiple other things um which we'll go through I'll, I'll explain vaguely what i what i know i'm not a genius i didn't make this tool for god's sake <laughs> i only use the tool uh, so i can tell you what i what i have experienced from it like i said it it gives you a few more freedoms uh, than you normally have with your quest it also enables you to sort of uh it's almost like you know in minecraft this might be a very outdated or not very useful reference but i'm going to use it anyway so you know minecraft when you install a texture pack you can, uh, if you download it from wherever you download it from, you can download different sizes of texture pack. So like you can download like an X64 version or an X256 version. And the higher the, the number there uh, depicts the higher the resolution of the Minecraft texture pack, if that makes sense to you. Hopefully that does. But basically you can improve the texture quality and stuff like that of the Quest games and make them a lot sharper, a lot nicer to experience. This may be at the detriment of some battery life. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't tested it for that long. I haven't done like a, a super long game of walkabout mini golf and tested it against if I upgraded the textures versus if I don't. I don't know. It does definitely improve the visuals though. I can say that for sure. This is what I experienced from my usage of this. So when you open a profile of a game that you have, so in my case, like I said, it was walkabout mini golf, you have a lot of different um, settings that you are now able to change thanks to this application so you can change the resolution like the actual physical resolution of the screen kind of thing uh you can change that you can also change the refresh rate to you can set it to auto which i i assume it's on normally i think that is the base uh profile is auto uh same as like a lot of the cpu gpu and ffr not sure what ffr means what does that um, i don't know what ffr means i can't think of it um but a lot of these are set to dynamic uh, as standard but you're able to actually customize that and put them at high very high insane stuff like that as well as improving the resolution now uh, if you like me don't necessarily know exactly what you're doing with these settings i mean i understand the resolution somewhat but as to the others i'm not entirely sure I, again i guess uh frame rate fps hertz whatever you want to call it um i understand that as well that is more frames but in terms of everything else, the CPU, the GPU, and definitely the FFR, I have no idea what they are. So what I opted for is to go with the, the preset HD and UHD settings. You can clearly see, like even from screenshots that we have, uh, I took my own screenshots, but the, the site actually has a lot of screenshots itself. You can see from the comparison screenshots that the quality that is added by upgrading, you know, using a UHD, using a HD, or customized upping the resolution, etc uh, provides a much clearer crisper uh, image it makes text a lot easier to read it makes textures a lot clearer uh, and it does improve it it does improve the visual of your vr game so yes i use this in walkabout mini golf uh, I, I just played around on some of the driving range some of the putting just to compare i try to do roughly similar things and just look around and i will show comparisons on the screen of those i also tested out the 
um, original software that comes with the Oculus, the, the one that kind of like teaches you how to use the buttons. I did use that briefly as well uh, to test out some of these profiles and things like that. Very simple to use. Now, the in terms of installation, like I said, it was easy. I've made videos before on how to sideload things, and this works pretty much exactly the same way. Like you, you pay for the the, the software on uh, it's on itch.io. You buy it on there. You have access. You download the APK file, uh, which you can then use um, a program like SideQuest, which I, I'm pretty sure I have made a video before how to install on SideQuest. It's very easy, and all of the tutorials are actually here on the website as well. So you are able to follow that if if you need that extra help. Um, in one case, I did actually need some extra help. So uh, I had it installed. I'd, I'd done the side loading. That was very. It takes like four seconds. It's very very simple. Um, and then when I opened it, it kept saying that there was some sort of ADB error or something. Yeah, it said something about ADB and launching it over Wi-Fi. I had to activate that. I had no idea what that was. That completely stumped me for a few minutes. So I went back onto the website and there are some very helpful tutorials on here that will explain how you can activate that. Uh, it is literally like like a setting you need to check. It's actually quite simple to set up. And it, like I said, if you if you are struggling with that, I'll try and put links to, in the description to the to the installation uh, and, the, and the ADB thing, because I think those are the two main uh, not issues, but little things that might get in the way. So once you have it installed, anyway, you open your headset, uh, same as you would. You launch it like you would any other game. You have to go to the Unknown Sources tab. If you haven't siloed anything before, it will be in the Unknown Sources drop-down menu of your like installed software. And you launch it from there. And then you can uh, alter and change your profiles as much as you would like. And then once you've done that, you can launch the game directly from actually within the app as well, which makes it super easy. Uh, and then to confirm that your changes your resolution everything that you've made uh changes to the profile has been actually applied there is a little like um a little pop-up that comes up when you launch the game to say i have applied this whatever resolution high gpu high cpu and all that stuff to make sure that you are aware that it is it is working um you can change it back at any time you want you can you can go in and just select the profile you can reset it back to original uh, you know whatever the game originally comes set as uh, if if you want to so that's fine it's very easy to use very simple to change and like i said it does provide extra visual fidelity i guess it's extra quality extra texture extra sharpness it's very nice i mean you can see from the footage and from the screenshots that it does make a difference it makes a big difference and it's only like 499 and it's super easy to use it's a handy thing to have on your headset for sure uh, and i will definitely be using it especially for me coming from the perspective of a content creator i want to make sure that when i record something it looks nice now i have recorded vr games and they're a little bit different to record anyway because of the aspect ratio of the video uh, that it records directly from the headset. I always use um, the direct recording from the headset because it gives me the widest field of vision. So I always use that. But to be able to get that extra sharpness and that extra quality in the textures is super cool for, for making a video. Now, talking about video making, now there is an option in the software as well to change the resolution that you record videos at. So um, like I said, as standard, the headset, I'm not sure exactly of the resolution. I, I could look it up. I'll look it up and add it on screen. But the resolution of the like standard internal recording of a Quest 2, um, it's a square. But that's what you get as standard. You can change this using the software uh, to 720p, 1080, 30 frames per second, full frames, all that stuff. Now, I did record some of this. I'm not entirely sure how it comes across in the footage. So what I did notice, and it does depend on the profile that you're using and and the particular software that you're using, the game that you're running at the time. Uh, I personally noticed a little bit of stuttering when you're playing. Like, um, it's sort of like a motion blur. It's a bit weird. I didn't really... I've had it before when I've tried to do similar things. Now, if you dial back the profile in whatever software game you're playing at the minute, that might help. Because basically, as far as I'm aware, after talking to the developer of this, it is sort of like your headset is being overloaded at that point. It's trying to do too much. It's trying to record in too high of a, you know, resolution and, and size, as well as trying to run a game at high resolution. So maybe dialing that back might help you. Like I said, it might not come across so much in the footage, but it's definitely something you feel. Um, but like I said, it, it's not necessarily something a lot of people will really, will concern a lot of people because if you're recording a video in your headset to show somebody or just 
even to make content, I find the natural like standard square resolution that the Quest 2 has pretty good. But it, the option is there and I like the fact that it's very easy to change and, and use. I think that's really all there is to say. I mean, it's that's a good thing in a way. It's a very simple to use piece of software. It's quite easy to install. Like I said, you have these couple of little things that, that there is instructions on how to, to do these, how to install it, how to sideload it, and how to work around the ADB um, Wi-Fi issue thing that I had. They're not that difficult to fix. And once you've got it sorted, it just sort of works. It's very like easy to use. It makes sense. You open the software, you select your game uh, that you have installed on your headset. You're able to select the game. You're able to alter the profile. It has ready-made profile, so you don't even have to fiddle around with it. If you just want your game to look better, then you can just select like a HD texture and it will immediately look better in game. Now, I've previously done kind of similar things, but I've always had to like plug the headset into the PC and go through a piece of software. And it's it's been really cumbersome. This piece of software, it being completely wireless, makes it super, super easy to do the same things that I was doing before, but I just gave up because they weren't worth it. Now that I can just change it on the fly in the headset, like before I play the game, that's amazing that's super super useful so thank you to the developer for hooking me up with a code so that i could check this out uh, i really really enjoy it it's going to be something that i use for for my content creation to try and get the best quality video out of my headset that i can in terms of text reading in games in vr sometimes i find that difficult because i do find them a little blurry i don't know whether that's just my eyes being bad could definitely be that or whether it is in fact the the, the way that the headset works and the way the screens are close to your eyes. I don't know. This definitely helped me be able to see text a lot clearer. It, it sharpens it up a lot. Uh, you can definitely see that in some of my uh, Walkabout mini golf stuff because you can see the signs. They're a lot clearer when I have updated the, the profile to a higher resolution profile. So Quest Games Optimizer, I highly recommend you check it out. There will be a link obviously in the description where you can go check it as well as links to any of the useful, helpful things that I had to use just to get this set up properly. Like I said, it was pretty easy anyway though. Um, I highly recommend it. If you're a Quest 2 user, you do a lot of VR, you play a lot of games in that, uh, I, I recommend you try it out. It's, it's a very cheap little piece of software and it does a lot for that. And I really, really like it. So thank you for letting me check it out. I really liked it. Hope this has been helpful to you guys as well watching uh, and, and that you're going to look into this and look at hopefully improving your experience in VR as well because uh, the, extra, the extra quality is always really nice. If your PC was able to run something at an extra quality just by installing a piece of software, uh, then, then I'd want to do that too. So why would you not want to do it with VR? Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Let me know what you think and I will see you guys next time. Bye!